Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them and his face shone like the sun and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud a voice said, This is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell to the ground and were overcome by fear. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Get up, and do not be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. dawn of the east, brightness of light, everlasting and sun of righteousness, come and enlighten him that sitteth in darkness and the shadow of death. This is a painting of Christ, the glorified Lord. Arresting for their sublime strangeness, the eyes and face of Christ are a silent answer to that universal human longing to do away with the old self. On Mount Tabor, his face shone with the self-same glory that shone on the face of Moses. In this painting, it is literally the self-same glory. As the artist, Christian, layered the one piece over the other, letting the paint of Moses seep through and paint Christ at the same time. In Tabor's light, Jesus was revealed to be the light, the light that enlightens everyone, the light by which we see light. In him, we meet the truth of ourselves, that we sit in the shadow of death, that all our lives are marked by that ancient and constant turning away from the light of God and humankind is dominated by the wages of sin, the undoing of creation in death. And yet, as the disciples present at the tra transfiguration heard from the midst of that bright cloud, the beloved of God has come among men. He is the light which the darkness could not comprehend and could not overcome. His life was ordered toward his death. When the sun was blotted out and the son of man lifted up on the cross. But at Golgotha, when the light shrieked with the agony of humankind in their unending turn to darkness, he robbed us of our right to annihilation. He robbed us of sin's wages and the light crept into the tomb, and so shot it through with his own radiant power to bring life where once was death. The birth of the beloved was ordered toward this death, to the end that the whole of creation would glint with the promise of his resurrection and the dawn of an eternal spring, with the promised coming of the new day when all who have died in him will receive their lives back again. When the creation that has languished in the sorrow of death will be set free and transformed by the radiant power of the Son of God. 
What is the glory that is being revealed? It is the glory of Christ, our life.